So I'm talking with Dr. with Yulin Wang, who is, uh, where are you anyway? I'm in Santa Barbara, California. So you're in Santa Barbara, California, but I'm in on Long Island and in the emergency room. Um, similar to the emergency room I was in in the Hudson Valley about two months ago. And boy, I would have liked to have had you there when I had my stroke. <laughs> Is there any well, so if you could imagine here, imagine a patient laying there. Right. Um, you know, if you had a, a dedicated um, person holding a laptop all the time, you know, you could make certainly make some progress. But if you want to really have a, 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 an, a, you know, an interaction of clinical quality, you need something much better than a laptop in both the audio and the video, and then in this case, having the mobility access, which allows a very realistic interaction, and hopefully that's what you're sensing here. So, I, yeah. you, you know, unfortunately, you can't see the image I see, but I see a very, very high-quality image. In fact, I can put on this picture right here, <laughs> and then I can see how I can, I can zoom in on you. This is where we do our uh, manufacturing. This is where we put together the different products. You can see the different lines of kind of robots, uh, RP lights, RP vantages. What you see here is actually our remote presence robot, which becomes the remote stroke physician so that he or she can help take care of a patient uh, in the actual hospital environment. And so the, uh, the doctor can move about, can look about, can interact with the patient, the family, the staff as if they were there, figure out the proper uh, um, uh, care plan through diagnosing the patient and asking questions to all the different people, and then help the on-site staff take care of that patient. Or say, hey, you better get that patient as quickly as possible over to a different location where they might have more capabilities to take care of that patient. Wherever the patient is, we can bring the clinical expertise to the patient as opposed to the patient always needing to get to where the clinical expertise is. So starting in the continuum is say a pre-hospital setting. So for example in an ambulance, this is meant to be an ambulance bay on the wall, but even in an ambulance setting, we can bring the clinical expertise through our RP Express platform, where the physician can log into that and to help the on-site paramedics, EMT, take care of that patient in a transport situation in, in a pre-hospital setting. And then the patient uh, would, might be brought into an emergency department, and here's a setting where the patient is uh, in an emergency bay and we have uh, a, an RP light is what we call this which is like like the robot but it has and it has a robotic head but you push it around instead of it, it being able to move around by itself and through this device or the robot the physician or clinical expertise can be used to help take care of the patient in the um, emergency room. I can't think of a better example of the right eyes at the right place at the right time. That's exactly right. And stroke is one of those situations where if you, time is everything. If you can't, the, the, the phrase is time is brain. And if and there's you know 700,000 strokes a year or something like that, it's the third leading cause of death, the first leading cause of disability. So there's real costs associated with disability. And so if you can just get the right expertise at the right place at the right time, do the right thing, do the best practices, we, you, you literally can make from life and death to complete recovery types of changes in stroke. Like many technologies, in order to use it and really benefit from it, you have to change your work habits. And that's actually... Uh, the biggest challenge is educating the healthcare, uh, organ uh, healthcare system to adopt telemedicine. We fall under the umbrella of telemedicine 
and to use telemedicine of getting the right expertise to the right place at the right time to do the right thing. I think everyone appreciates that if you can do that, you can actually improve quality of care and do so at a lower cost, and you can bring care to more people too, so greater access. But in order to do that, you're going to have to change some work habits. And so how do, how do you actually just change the work habits from what you're used to? How do you change them in a way where financially things work as well? How do you change them to also account for perhaps differences of credentialing, licensing, privileging, these things which have to be taken into account? And, and those are the barriers which actually are of overcomable but take education and time. We're actually very excited that healthcare reform is going on right now, and regardless of how you feel about uh, the Obama's bill, um, what has happening and is happening now is the healthcare industry is in transition. I think what everybody agrees on is that it costs too much, quality is too variable, and the current trend lines of continued increasing costs cannot be sust sustained. And so everyone's in agreement on that. So then the question is, okay, what do we do about it? And that's where, um, you know, we think that telemedicine is a real cornerstone to helping us solve these problems.